Now at 11, a CBS News Miami exclusive. It was just completely ignored and then the roof collapsed. Investigating campuses in disrepair and how Broward School spent your taxpayer dollars. In my own personal opinion on what happened with the bond is that they did what was easier first. Tonight, new insight into what caused the school building gap. CBS News Miami uncovered low income families in Broward wait longer on repairs and renovations at their kids schools. That's despite the district budgeting more money to spend on schools with more low income students. Joe Gorcho has a first hand look at what's happening inside our schools. A roof collapsed, debris scattered. In March 2021, James Rickards Middle School's media center was under construction when disaster struck. Never expect that the roof would start crumbling down. After the school collapsed, Broward schools budgeted more than $60 million the following fiscal year to replace it. Dr. Natalie Lynch Walsh is the Broward Schools Facilities Task Force Chair. She believes the project should have been appropriately funded years before the school crumbled. It's even worse than a Band-Aid approach because it's not even like they were re-roofing in recognition of the structural issues with a plan to fully address them down, you know, as soon as possible. It was just completely ignored and then the roof collapsed. A lot of my schools in the East have deteriorated. Nora Rupert has served on the Broward School Board for more than a decade. We visited several schools in the district she represents still needing millions in repairs like Crystal Lake Middle School in Pompano Beach. Some students like Peter Torso's daughter learn in portables as he shares problems inside the brick walls. Ceiling tiles that are in disrepair, air conditionings that don't function, stairwell damage. Video from inside shows caution tape blocking off seats in its small auditorium. We see holes in damaged ceiling tiles. A bucket catches water leaking from drinking fountains. We expect our children to soar in their academics and in their development, and yet we need to have them in an environment that mimics what the outcome that we want. Rupert says the 2014 bond funding repairs needed more oversight, a priority list, and an implementation plan. Nine years of waiting on top of that. And it's just, it's a disaster. And quite frankly, it's shameful. So I look down and my pants are full. <laughs> Board member Debbie Hickson took time to paint walls at a school needing love. Broward Estates, helping a local organization's effort to initiate projects to support underserved schools' basic needs. In my own personal opinion on what happened with the bond is that they did what was easier first, which kind of made sense, but those were all the newer buildings. The east side of the county is the older part. The west side, those are newer buildings. Projects would get prioritized sometimes by who the board member was, where the school is and the difficulty, the degree of complexity involved with the project. How was that able to happen where priorities were shifted? Um, I can only speculate would be other board members had better relationships with decision makers. Governor Ron DeSantis called for a grand jury following the mass shooting in Parkland that claimed 17 lives. It looked into school safety measures, branching out to investigate other problems in Broward schools, including how the district spent the bond program dollars on school repairs. The grand jury report issued in August 2022 found smart bond program mismanagement. Desperately needed roofs are not getting put on schools. Money is being squandered. A generation of students is being taught in worse conditions than they were promised, and the board is responsible. The governor removed four board members last year. The report recommended keeping Rupert and current board chair Lori Alhadef. Should be obvious that their attempts to hold the superintendent and his district staff accountable have been routinely and openly thwarted by the majority of the board. The report outlined project delays and cost increases. Schools like Stranahan and Fort Lauderdale waited years for work. Construction is now underway to build a new cafeteria five years after it was put in the budget for only a renovation in 2018. I'm frustrated. I'm pissed off. I'm not going to get used to it, and I refuse to get used to it. On August 22nd, newly hired Superintendent Dr. Peter Licata expressed disappointment in current school conditions during a Broward Schools workshop.
to make sure that people knew that I was not happy with that. Lakata sat down with us to discuss what he had seen after walking the hallways at different schools within the district. How do you address that inequity? We understand that um, some communities are more vocal than others, which is fine. But we also have to speak up for the parents that don't speak up or can't speak up. And that's part of looking at that data. Those are the schools we're focusing on right now. They've started. They've, they've, they're for several reasons they've stopped from previous administrations. And some of them doesn't, it just, they don't make sense to me. Challenges remain with only $118 million left in bond funds and using additional capital funding to help finance projects. I did the history myself. There was 97 projects done in the Smart Mom over nine years. 97 total projects and closed. Uh, my board has asked me to complete 152. Wait a minute. So 97 in nine years that have closed out and there's still 152 yes. that they need you to get done in two years? Two and a half. Two and a half. Yeah. That's a short window. Sure it is. Um, is it impossible? I don't know. I'm going to try. Less than three months on the job, he says he's creating a project priority list. We're not going to let uh, anything else influence that other than what's best for that community, what's best for those children. Schools uh, are in some of our, our, our hardest hit neighborhoods, and we want to make sure that we're focusing on them first. And that sparks optimism for parents like Terso. In the conversations that I've had, it's clear that children are above politics and that's what gives me an, an intense amount of passion and optimism. Joe Gorcho, CBS News, Miami. And you can find part one of Joe's reporting on the school building gap on our website. Just go to cbsmiami.com slash weblinks.